Welcome to this video on 11 handy Lightroom tools for landscape photographers. My name is Josh Dunlop, I'm a professional photographer and I'm going to walk you through my process for editing landscape photographs. The first thing I'm going to do, and this is something that most photographers seem to be unaware of inside Lightroom and it's often overlooked, I'm going to adjust the colour profile of my images. Now if you're using Adobe Lightroom CC and you've recently updated your software, you may find that this section up here has now jumped to the top. It used to be down here at the bottom near calibration. It's now at the top. And the reason for that, I believe, is because Adobe wants to point out the importance of this tool. This is where you should start processing your image. So right now I'm looking at this scene using Adobe's color profile. But I shot using a Canon EOS 5D Mark IV and I want my photos to look like they did in the camera. So what do I do? I need to go in and click on this section over here, these four grids, so I can click here and I can go to browse. I can click on this four grids and now I can see the different color profiles that I had when shooting with my Canon camera. But more than that, I can skip past the camera matching section and I can go down and I can see different artistic color profiles. And there's black and white ones and modern ones too. So I'm going to start off with a camera matching one and I'm going to go to camera landscape. And you can see the blues and the greens and certainly the, the yellows and oranges in the greens are now more vivid. So I'm going to switch back to this and the interesting thing you'll notice here is nothing has changed in this editing process. None of the colors have changed, nothing has changed. This is a basic underlying setting in your camera's processing and I've applied that to my image before I even start editing. So that's a great first step when it comes to landscape photography. Then I can proceed to edit my image and I'm doing it on top of those initial adjustments of my camera's profile. It's a very important first step. Before I start applying any initial adjustments like exposure, contrast, highlights and shadows, there is a very important setting I need to turn on and that is the histogram exposure warning triangles. So it's going to show the clipping in my image. Now what does this do exactly? Well, we can see here we have red in our image and we have blue down here. The difference is red means I have white pixels in my scene and blue means I have black pixels in my scene. So there's no detail in those pixels other than white or black. And that's something we want to try our best to avoid or at least minimize when processing landscape photography because white or black means that we've lost detail in those pixels. So I turn these on when I do the initial processing of my photograph. If I increase the exposure here by a few stops, you can see that that red grows across the scene. And if I reduce it, you see that the blue creeps in. And we have lots of black in our scene. Now that these exposure clipping warnings have been turned on, I'm going to make some initial adjustments. I'm going to bring the exposure up slightly and I'm going to bring my highlights down, which is going to stop those pixels from clipping. Shadows up, which is again going to provide more detail in the scene and remove some of those pixels from clipping. Then I'm going to bring the whites back in and you'll start to see that the red creeped in again. So I'm just going to be very cautious of that. I'm going to bring it down to about there and the blacks too. And you can start to see black is trying to make its way back into the scene too as well. So I'll adjust those back there. And then I can go ahead and I can adjust the contrast a little bit and maybe bring the exposure down until I'm happy with the exposure. So now I've processed this photo and just visually looking at it here without zooming in, I don't see any black or red parts of the scene. It means that none of my image has lost any detail within the pixels and I'm starting with a really good base image. And if I didn't have these exposure clipping warnings on up here, that would have been a major issue. I wouldn't have done such a good job. And now that this is done, I can proceed with editing the rest of my image. When I crop my photos in Lightroom, and I do my best to not have to crop, there is a very useful and pretty well hidden feature that allows me to get the best composition from my crop. And that is the overlay tool. So I'm going to hit R here in the develop module to crop my image. And then I'm going to hit O for overlay. And it's going to show me all the different crop overlay guides to show me the best way to compose my image as I crop it. So I can cycle through and we can see here we've got the rule of thirds, we've got golden triangles, we've got the Fibonacci sequence. There's a bunch to choose from. And for this image, I'm going to go for the golden triangles. It's a pretty useful but rarely used composition tool. You know, they wouldn't put it in here if it wasn't a powerful tool. So bear that in mind. 
and it looks pretty good right now but what I was actually trying to do is I was trying to get the golden triangle to start in the top left hand side of the corner and go down to the bottom right hand side of the corner at the moment it's the wrong way round so by holding shift and pressing O again it's going to allow me to flip that round and then I can further experiment with different compositions and this works on a bunch of these different overlays you just have to experiment for yourself and you'll get some great results when you're editing a landscape photograph it's quite an amateur approach to go and look at the whole frame as if you have to edit everything at once if I was to edit this entire frame to expose for the sky it would look absolutely awful I'd have to bring the exposure down I'd probably want to add more dehaze and that's not going to look very good so what you can do instead is you can apply a graduated filter and that's this one up here graduated filter and you can apply all kinds of different adjustments to this image so what I'm going to do is I'm going to click and drag down here and this is going to give me my filter range you'll see three lines appear on the screen the top line is the top hard edge of the filter so everything there upwards is going to have the filter applied and then between that top line and the middle line is going to have some of the filter applied and then the bottom line to the middle line is going to have even less of the filter applied so it just graduates across that range and we'll show you what that looks like so if I apply an exposure increase here you can see that very little of the area underneath the, the middle line is having that exposure increase but as I drag this down you can see it gets even more gradual so I'm only trying to adjust this sky here and I think what I want to do is add a little bit of dehaze and perhaps bring the highlights down too and perhaps even the exposure just to make it pop out a little bit but the problem here now is we see that my friends on horseback here now have the same effect applied to them so what we can do is we can go into brush here and I can go into arrays and I'm going to make this smaller and let's make it fairly hard and I can go around his face and I can also click on show selected mask overlay here and just make sure it's not being applied to my friends I'm doing just a pretty rough job here so you can see but now we can see that it's not going to be applied to them so the graduated filter is a great way of processing just part of your image you don't have to do everything at once in fact if you avoid editing the whole frame as if it's one single exposure then you're going to get much better results yes it is one exposure but you can edit selectively around different parts of your image the quick little tool that I'm going to show you here is great for adjusting the contrast and the detail in your scene. It's called the Dehaze Slider. It used to be all the way down at the bottom near calibration, but they moved it to the top where it rightfully belongs to be. So what I'm going to show you here is very simple. I'm going to take the Dehaze Slider and I'm going to move it to the right. And you can start to see that yes, the image gets a little bit darker because it's removed some of that white haze in the scene, but you can correct that by adding more exposure. And as you adjust this slider, you can either add haze or you can remove haze and see more detail. Now, it's not removing all of the haze because it's a gradual process. You've still got this hazy line that runs diagonally through my scene. But now we have a lot more detail in this scene than before because we've adjusted the dehaze slider. It's great for shooting cities and sunsets. So I'll show you the difference here. This is the dehaze on and the dehaze off. This neat little trick is a great way of making your skies much more blue. And I do this to a lot of my landscape photography. So we can see here that it's a pretty blue sky day, but there's wisps of clouds covering and blocking some of that sky. And it doesn't look as bright as it could do. So what can you do here? Well, you can adjust vibrance and you can adjust saturation, but this is a very amateur approach. The best way to make your skies blue, even on what seems like an overcast day, is to scroll down to hue saturation and luminance go to the blue luminance slider now luminance if you're not aware is how light or how dark a color is so i'm going to take the blue sky and the blue color and i'm going to make it darker so instead of having a big white sky like this if i push it up i'm going to bring it down and now you can see this bold blue sky it's a very simple trick it doesn't always work but a lot of the time it's a big winner and of course you can also adjust the different color sliders across hue saturation and luminance but the one that i think is most powerful is that blue luminance slider so that's what i wanted to share with you here 
This handy Lightroom tool for landscape photographers is something that most photographers don't ever touch, but it can be very creatively powerful. And after a quick adjustment to my photos, just using the tone and the presence section, I can scroll down here and go to split toning. Now split toning is where you take a color in either the highlights or the shadows and you adjust the hue and the saturation. Let me show you what that looks like. So the highlights we can see over here, we have a lot of yellow and orange in the highlights. So I'm going to select somewhere around orange and I'm going to adjust the saturation of this highlight. And you can start to see how that whole sky, all these highlights are now starting to grow orange, a very powerful little trick. And over here in the shadows, we certainly have some greens and we have some blues. So I'm going to go over to green here and adjust the saturation of this. Now pushing this up changes the whole scene. And that's because we have a lot of shadows up in the sky here. So I'm very, very gentle when I make adjustments where I know there's going to be shadows close to the highlights. And the final thing you can do here is to adjust the balance. Do you want the priority to be over to the highlights or over to the shadows? By adjusting the balance slider, you get to play with this too. It's a great way to get creative with your processing. A real pet peeve of mine when capturing landscape photography is people in my scene. People have such a powerful visual way that as soon as you see them, your eyes go and look at them. And I wanna to try to avoid that. So what I'll do at times is to just remove them from my scene. And to do that, all I need to do is to adjust the clone and heal tool down here. And I can select this person here and I can either select his whole body like that, and you can see he's been removed, or I can use it as a brush and be very, very selective about what part is removed. By using a brush rather than just a selection tool, you're gonna to have a better result because you're not going to apply that heel or clone to areas of the scene that don't really require it. And just like that, I've been able to remove a person from my scene. I can do the same for this person over here. And if I have the time, I might even remove all of these cars from the scene. Lightroom's very powerful. You probably can't even tell where that person was in my scene anymore. And you can do this without anyone noticing. So it's a very useful tool to have. One thing I don't like to see in my scenes is a strong lens distortion. So depending on the focal length I'm shooting at and what I'm capturing, I'll often enable profile corrections. So this was shot at 100 millimeters. And as I turn on enable profile corrections here, you'll see very little changes because it's 100 millimeters. The, the distortion is not that strong. This next photo was shot at 14 millimeters. And as I enable profile corrections, it removes a lot of that vignette and stretches the image out to what it should naturally look like. Because it does remove the vignette, you can add it back in if you prefer that. And you can also add it in here in the profile corrections section. It depends on your preference. Personally, I just turn it on. And if I want some more vignette, I'll go and add some more later. Adobe Lightroom has a really cool feature for creating panoramas. Back in the day, you had to use separate software for this. And then they built it into Photoshop. And now it's also inside a Lightroom tool. But it's not just the panorama feature I want to show you here. It's something else. So I'm going to go now and I'm going to go to photo, photo merge, and then panorama. We'll give it just a moment to create the panorama preview. And here we have a completed panorama. The final step for me is to select the projection I use and it's almost always spherical. And then I hit merge. But there's one thing I can do before this and that is to use boundary warp. Boundary Warp is going to take this photo and it's going to push it to the tops, the sides and the corners of my image. Just like so. That means I don't have to crop the image later if I don't want and it gives me more to play with. It starts to remove some of that perspective distortion as well and I think it's a great tool. You've got to be a little bit careful about using this when there's a horizon in the photograph because it can make it bow out a little bit. But in a scene like this where there's no visible horizon, it's very powerful and makes it for a bigger image and more for me to play with later. The final handy tool that Lightroom has for landscape photographers is create virtual copy. We as landscape photographers are always wondering what would this photo look like if I edited it in black and white or if I did this or I did that. And they've enabled us to be able to experiment with this ourselves without losing those initial adjustments. So let's say I was happy with how I processed this photograph, but I wanted to see it in black and white. All I need to do is right click on the image and go to create virtual copy. And I now have two versions of the exact same photograph. I can go in and I can adjust 
the treatment to black and white, and I can adjust the profile to different black and white profiles. And now I can process this image just as I would for any other black and white photograph, but I still have those initial color adjustments. That is what makes it such a powerful tool. Create Virtual Copy is something I use very regularly. Thanks for watching. I'm Josh Dunlop for expertphotography.com. That is 11 handy Lightroom tools for landscape photographers. If you enjoyed the video, please consider subscribing, liking, or commenting, and we're producing more content like this every single week, so check it out. I'll speak to you soon. Thanks.